Hey guys, last weekend um, my husband and I had a chore to do in a different neighborhood and we decided to take our bicycles. And it took us an hour one way and it kind of wiped us out. But on the way there are lots of nice walking and cycling paths that are overgrown with wildflowers and things. And there were lots of flowering bushes. I think maybe some of them were like wild roses. There were some blackberries and all sorts of things as we were going past there was this really loud buzzing ruckus <laughs> and it was a huge collection of bees some bumblebees and a lot of honeybees were going from flower to flower and they were making so much buzzing noise they would go into a flower and just start shaking the whole flower with their wings and it was really cool and I'm really easily entertained. Like my perfect idea of a relaxing activity is just to go outside and watch other animals just do their thing. I really value the idea of retaining a certain level of awe in the world around us. Um, even though I'm not a particularly raw, raw enjoyer of life, I don't really feel like life is very much fun, but I can sort of see the world around me and feel awe-inspired by it. Just the idea that all of these things just happen to exist and a lot of it by chance and that these bees have figured out a very specific way of doing things and living. All I wanted to do was just climb into this rose bush and just hang out. <laughs> and I couldn't do that because I wasn't alone. Um, and we were on our way home by then and very tired. It's something I thought about for the whole rest of the day. I wish that I could just have that kind of environment. I wish that I had a yard <laughs> and a garden so that I could just go and visit the bees whenever I wanted to. But these are the kind of things that give me ideas of what to paint. And so I decided to paint myself sort of in a cartoon fashion, hiding out in this tree while the bees do their work. And at the end of this painting, um, I did most of this in one evening decided that, okay, well, I'll just finish it quickly the next morning before working on the commission painting. And so at the end of it, I did get really kind of impatient and sort of just finish it off by scribbling in the bees and painting them with gold paint instead of whatever it was that I imagined it would look like in the end. I normally do little 3D pieces on my paintings and I just didn't do it. And a lot of the reason for that is just because the pieces are so small, it would be really difficult to pull it off and they wouldn't really look like bees anyway. Oh well. <laughs> and I feel okay with finishing paintings off like that because I feel like I got some value out of painting it anyway. It's like taking a photo of something. But it's more than a photo, it's a creative spin on what could have been a photograph of bees or a video of bees. It is a painting of my personal enjoyment of the thing that happened. And so I think a lot of the reasons why I paint is the same reason why some people do scrapbooking and do photography and things like that. Keep a journal. So I guess today's question, which nobody asked, is do I require validation? to make art. A lot of artists say that art is dialogue, um, it's really easy to get put off and go on these long stretches of artist block when you don't feel like you're achieving anything or you're not connecting with other people. And that is a really big reason why people make art is to connect with other people around them. So you can relate and the people you show your artwork to can relate to you. and. It's just another form of conversation, especially if they're the kind of person like me who doesn't have conversations, like not even really at home. I don't really talk to anybody. And it kind of makes me think, like when I started drawing, why did I start? I feel like the reason why I was drawing a lot is because I wasn't really having conversations. It was something that I just did when I was out in public or in uncomfortable social situations that I was trying to escape from. You know how kids always draw on the back of their little placemat menus? <laughs> Maybe it was just a form of entertainment. I know that I was never the kind of kid who would draw something or make something and then run to my parents to show them. A lot of kids 
do that? What drives the instinct to make something and then immediately show somebody in what you'd perceive was a higher rank? But then I really ramped up my drawing hobby when I met another friend who also had a drawing hobby. So it was something that we could come together on. It was definitely the main event of our social get-togethers was to get together and draw and then show each other what we were doing. Of course, now we have things like YouTube and blogging and Twitter and social media. And um, I'm sure you've noticed that I don't really do social media. Maybe you haven't noticed. Facebook always sends me little rants about how I don't post enough, <laughs> and, which is really annoying. And I tend to forget that I even have a blog and don't really know what to put on it, especially as of late. Um, lately, I've been finding it especially difficult to post on Instagram, um, make these voiceovers for videos, post something on my blog, tweet something. I have nothing to say these days. I feel like, like I'm at this interesting point in my life where I just am disengaging entirely except I keep making new videos and I keep drawing so would I keep drawing if I felt this way but nobody was watching I don't pay attention to the likes or dislikes on a page my subscriber count is so um, slow and unmemorable that I usually can't tell if it's going up or if it's going down because <laughs> I can't remember so I don't know like what do you what do you think do you think that we require validation when we make art? Would you be able to continue drawing or writing or making music or whatever it is that you do if you were the last person on earth? I thought maybe I had an answer to this, but I guess I don't. I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, thanks for being here and I'll see you next time. Thank you.